Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and welcome to a build time lapse guys. We're doing a build time lapse uh, because today we are going to be doing the very, very complicated task of um, just replacing SLSs to SRBs with Soyuzes. Um, yes, very, very complicated task. That's, you know, this warrants a very, a very long build, build, build time, this isn't even time lapse, this is in one time speed. Um, you know, very complicated project we have going here. This takes at least two minutes of work to do. So I thought this warranted a video, the time lapse, or not a time lapse. A, so you guys, um, I just, we're, yeah, we're doing that. This is um, a stupid idea. <laughs> but um, I just figured, you know what? what? What would it be like if I put two Soyuzes on the side of an SLS and launched it into yonder? And that's that's what I did. I actually do some pretty, these are two like completely stock Soyuzes, as in like there. I didn't change the Soyuz or the SLS at all. The SLS has the Orion module in it, and the Soyuz um, just has the Soyuz module in it. Uh, so basically, um, I'm just going to try and make do with this stuff that I have and try and send it to a, a faraway land and come back with uh, the stuff that I have and just bring three Kerbals because that's a fun thing to do and why not? And the one thing you will notice is that the, um, the decouplers, you know, the way it worked, that it looks like they're floating, right, because of how I had to offset them so the boosters wouldn't, like, be, you know, wouldn't explode my... Uh, main engine when the uh, boosters separate, so I'm just putting some struts there for visual purposes, so it doesn't look like things like completely floating, even though it just completely is floating. So yeah, that's that. Um, and then let's gonna put those on, and then we'll be getting ready for the launch. I also put some more um, some of those uh, launch clamp things. Uh, if you don't see it, if I don't include it in the time lapse thing, it's not a time lapse. I keep saying time lapse. Uh, either way, uh, yeah, that, that'll that be that, and then we'll get ready to launch here in just a minute, and then we're going to be setting this to a mysterious destination, which I will talk about um, when we get a little bit later into the flight. And one thing I do want to say is, uh, if, you, if you're new to the channel right now, this really won't affect you, but uh, yeah, I haven't been uploading in the last uh, few, it's been, I think this is like three days I missed in a row of an upload. I usually do daily uploads, so yeah, um, I'm back. Uh, going to do daily uploads again. Yeah, I just, you know, stuff, crap happening, so... Yeah, and I just decided to take a break for one entire day, which kind of delayed two videos. And this video got super delayed because it had major problems that I will discuss. It's actually a pretty funny story, so if you want to stay tuned for that, which we'll talk about when we get a little bit later into the flight. But here is our SLS, which is looking a little bit weird because it has soybeans on it. <laughs> and now we're just going to throttle up the engines and get rid of the launch clamps. And I, I, I didn't check my staging and there are two launch clamps that are still on. So, yeah, we're going to have to quickly revert that and we can you know try it again throttling up those engines right now and we can get underway so the uh the uh sls now instead of that one mammoth engine it has all of those soyuz engines which there are just a ton of them on there so it, it is a lot of power I actually have the mammoth thrust limited to 50 percent uh, just because we would like be exploding through the atmosphere if we uh if we had that thing at full power um all the way up through um, all the way all full power during our launch, but we are now going, going to start a very gradual gravity turn as the most rockets do, and there go the boosters who stage away in that really cool way, and then throttling Mammoth back up to full power. That's called a Korlev's Cross, by the way, that booster separation. It's a fun fact for you, because I think the guy who designed it was named like Korlev or so I don't know, I don't really research. Research, who researches for plebs? I am a smart SMRT person. So, just pitching about 45 kilometers by 45 km, 45 degrees by 10 kilometers, and just going to be doing a fairly standard descent profile. I do actually, I did high five this descent way, 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 way too flat, as you will see in a very, very short moments. But just continuing to pitch over, continue to pitch over at a fairly standard rate until I'm about 20 degrees or 15 degrees, and then I just leave it there as we accelerate ourselves to our orbital velocity which at uh, in carbon is around 2300 meters a second and this is a part of the launch that just starts taking forever as I just uh, have to point flat as we start to get some nice down range distance from the Kerbal Space Center and we can start to get some flames can we guys we like flames don't we flames are nice that's uh, totally a normal thing if in a real rocket that definitely happens uh, you like have plasma build up on your on your ascent. Uh, fun fact, that's not. But oh uh, well, we need to stop like coughing. 
Probably not good audio quality. My last video, guys, the audio quality was just so bad. I don't know why anybody watched it. Um, if you get, I don't, I don't know if you did. I don't know why. It just you died. Uh, the problem should be fixed now. Uh, I think I figured out that I was just turning my audio too high in the editor, and that just screwed everything up when I hit render. So that's that. Staging away that stage on the Soyuz. And now we have that upper stage on the Soyuz, and then we can cut the throttle because there we go. We are we are at we are at orbital velocity, and we can cruise on up to our Apoapalapalypse at 100-ish uh, kilometers. I actually lose I lost quite a bit of Apoap's height because of how low I was in the atmosphere when I cut my engines. Uh, because I, you know, like I said, I flew really uh, I flew really flat ascent, so that is that happened. So I lost like six kilometers. So now we can expose all of our, uh, get rid of all the fairings. We can see our Orion module and the two Soyuzes. Get rid of the launch escape systems. And what we're going to do is transfer the crew of the one Soyuz into the, or transfer a Kerbal into that Soyuz. And then I'm going to dock it up to uh, the docking port on the Orion. And then they will just uh, fly on out together. They will, they will be the module. They will be our kind of uh, lander. One of them will serve, serve as a lander and the other will turn it serve as our return stage. Uh, to our mysterious destination. And then the other Soyuz that I'm going to do is just pump all the fuel out to the uh, into the center tank that it has, and then it is just going to be ditched because that is lame. We don't need it. And I'm going to do our orbital insertion burn. I did have to do all this before my orbital insertion burn because so the, the other Soyuz could actually uh, crash back down into uh, the land. Uh, and as you go to the night side, sorry if YouTube kind of screws up my uh, quality of my video, or maybe it's me not doing the right render setting, or I don't know, but the point is, my videos get really garbage looking at night, so if it's if it's something I'm doing, I will, I will attempt to solve said problem as quickly as possible. Uh, so, uh, right now what I'm doing is um, planning our maneuver node out to Duna, because we are going to Ike. Uh, Ike is Duna's moon. Um, we couldn't really go to Duna because neither the, neither my the, neither the Orion or the Soyuz has enough delta V to take off or, from uh, Duna. So we're gonna be going to Ike, which I feel is one of the more neglected places on in, uh, in KSP. I feel, I feel like the, the most neglected places are Drez, Ike, Pole, and Bop. Although to be honest, after doing a super long series on Drez, I did because it's the link link up there. Um, Drez is kind of boring. It sucks. Um, well, I tried to build a base there and a colony and space stations and all that crap. But yeah, no, it 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 just gets really hard because Dredd's on an inclined orbit, and especially when you're trying to send like 300 ton craft out there, and your rockets are just huge, and it, it it's so ridiculous because it you have to do those correction burns, and it just it gets tiring after a while. That's why, for my if I ever make a colony again or a surface base, I am going to like Minmus or Cur or M the Mun. So yeah. Um, we're going to Ike. Um, this is actually my second time ever going to Ike, um, ever in KSP, actually. Oh, no. um, so, and second video. The first one, um, we put a car another card up there for you guys. It was called uh, Strata Launch and Strata Launch, in which I Strata Launch a Strata Launch, and then I sent a little payload out to uh, Ike and back. That was pretty fun. But nevertheless, we are going to slow down at Duna, and then we can get ready to uh, do a few correction burns to get out to Ike. I don't really, I'm not worrying about like being perfectly equatorial, doing anything perfectly efficiently, because I have a little bit extra delta V. Another thing I'm going to do for this mission is try to be a good space citizen and not leave any debris in space, because I figure, you know what, we have a little extra delta V. Why not? Why not? Why not be a good space citizen? Uh, and I already have like almost 500 debris in this save, so you know what? Why not? Try not to add to it. I'm just gonna time warp, or do I time warp? I better be time warping. Um, to there we go. Um, to uh, the first new first correction bird. Ike is super easy to get to. If you want to go to like, if you want to go to a cool place, like Ike is pretty cool. Uh, I have the astronomer's visual pack, which I'm kind of still debating whether I like it or not. Like, look at the stars. Like the background, the stars. That's the biggest bit of controversy for me. Because it looks super cool. Like, look at that. Like, that looks beautiful. But it's also, it looks like it seems way too dense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there are too many stars. It, you know, like, I, I think that makes sense. Like, do you guys, like, especially when I'm planning maneuver nodes, it's just like, you're looking at, like, crap like that the whole time. And it's, like, a little distracting. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, so, yeah. It's a cool place. Um, it's really easy. If I, all the, any of the moons, I'd say it's the easiest to get to. Not really. Um, like... Once you're in the sphere of influence of the one celestial body, like if you're if you're in a 
a Kerbin orbit or a, a Duna orbit or a Joule orbit, I would say if you're in any of those orbits, the easiest moon to get to out of those would be Ike. Like, you know what I mean? I think you guys know what I mean. Like, it is the, the reason it's easy is because Ike is fairly big relative to Duna, and it is a on a very low orbit. So it's just you know you're like like half of Duna's orbit is like in Ike's sphere of influence. So it's really easy. But either way, we have ditched the main core of the SLS, and now we are burning the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, which is what it's called, uh, which is uh, has one RL10 engine or a poodle. And now we are going to use that also as the lander. I'm going to do the one, the deorbit burn with it, and I'm going to stage it away. And then it's going to be the Orion module, which we use as the lander. So the Soyuz is going to remain in orbit, and we're going to use it to come back. So deploying those solar panels, then we can come down to Ike. Now the cool features of astronomers is you can see there's a little bit of a dust cloud uh, coming in um, as we come into uh, come into Ike. So that's pretty neat. And then here we go, coming into the surface. There aren't any landing legs. Like I said, I didn't really try to modify these craft very much, so... Um, we're just going to be landing on the surface of the Terrier engine and do a little bit of a floaty float here because I don't know how to land apparently. So coming in nice and slow, a little bit of a uh, little bit of a slope with the reaction wheels on board. The uh, command pod are able to uh, fully adjust for that, and there you go, just touching down now. And uh, I would love to do a surface activity in EVA, but if you uh, you can't really see right now, but here it's kind of bouncing along, uh, ooh, a little sketchy. A little sketchy. You need to point radial out. There we go. And then I think I turned the gimbal off here in a second. But yeah, if you're looking, you can see there is a giant parachute in the right blocking our door. So unfortunately, our Kerbal is just going to have to sit here and enjoy his life in his command pod as he can get ready to do his mission back to Kerbin. Because, you know, why do we go places so we can come back, right? Going back up into the sky now and we can get back to Kerbin. So, I'm starting to do a little bit of pitch over. can fly basically flat. Uh, I came, my, my, I, I started, I took off a little bit late, so I have to fly very flat to try and catch up with my craft, and then I can make a little maneuver node to get a rendezvous set up. Really easy, because it's pretty small. It's easy to do rendezvous and docking there. So, gonna get myself lined up, and then, I don't know what that accent was, but <laughs> going to now um, aim at the... Uh, just do the docking, basically. It looks pretty cool when you're docking with that command pod. I don't know why. It's just, it just looks dope. Uh, another thing, if you're looking at that Soyuz, you're thinking, like, how did he get that hitchhiker to, like, look? Because that's not how big the hitchhiker is. Uh, you know what? I will. I'll talk about that in one second, because I want to talk about this docking in one second. Like, watch what happens when we dock. There's so much stuff to talk about, right, guys? There was a dock. Look, it never did the weird camera thing. So I'm like, did it dock? So I have to, like, go out of... It was just because I had the UI disabled. So that's kind of cool. But either way, yeah, that hitchhiker is actually tweet skilled. Now, I will preface that by saying, I am not, I did not make this Soyuz. This is uh, my friend made this Soyuz. It was uh, yeah, he made this Soyuz. So I also have made a Soyuz. Uh, you can see it in my N1 versus Saturn V video, uh, which is just uh, another card. A lot of cards today, right? Uh, so basically, yeah. Um, let me know. I didn't use Tweak Scale on mine. He used Tweak Scale. So let me know if he is so very very evil person for using Tweak Scale. Decided to use his because just why not? So, like, you know what? Let me know what you guys think of his, and you can roast him in the comment section. He is on my Discord if you don't know who he is. You will likely deduce that. Um, or just ask. I will on the Discord. I have a Discord if you want to join. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. But uh, enough plugs. And if you want to subscribe or like or comment or any of that stuff, I, I'm told that's what you're supposed to say as a YouTuber. We had just doing your burn back. You guys can, pre you guys pretty much get the gist. Um, I do want to tell, tell a quick story, story time with, with Pilot. Um, so, basically, um, this is, I wanted to have this video come out yesterday, but due to recording issues, I could not get it to come out yesterday, because I managed to screw up the recording just so badly on this video, um, and I was going to do a correction burn, and then, um, basically what we do is we just do a re-entry, did take a few error break passes, and then re -enter. normally you would re-enter with that, uh, descent module, but based on the way that the tweak scale worked, I couldn't really do that, so I have to come in with this one, which if you didn't know, has the heat shield on it, these, uh, Soviet things, which I didn't know. So that fun fact does take a few passes, but we kind of come in to land anyway. And there's a heat shield that almost kills us in just a second. Is it? Yeah, there it goes flying past us. So like I was saying, 
um, when I first attempted to record it, I'm like, all right, guys, this will be a nice, easy video that I'll get the people. People will like it. I'm going to get it done because I have some pretty ambitious videos coming up soon. So I decided to get this one done first. So I'm like, all right, let's do this. So I launched. I'm like, you know, I'm going to take it to poll because that's a cool place to go. So after I get out to poll, or I can't, it's so hard to get to poll on a budget of, you know, like a, you know, when you have a limited amount of Delta V, which is something I did have. So after like hours of messing with maneuver nodes, I go and try to get gravity assist and try not to get accidental gravity assist. I fi finally, I'm like, all right, let's come into up. And then I realize I have not enough delta V to like even barely land. So like, oh great, that's just lovely. So, well, that that's like three hours of my life gone. Let's let's try and make another one. Let's try that again. I'm like, let's go to Ike. So I go to Ike, head out to Ike. I. Circularize around Duna. I land on. I come in around um, Ike. I get into a, an orbit around Ike. And oh yes, guess what? Oh my orbit's too low. Oh I just crashed into Ike. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, where's my quick save? And I'm like, oh jeez, my quick save is like just after I done my ejection burn out of carbon. So I'm like, all right, let's do the correction burn and the circularization again. I do that. I'm like, all right, we're getting further. And it's pulling our parachute, by the way, guys. So, I don't think you guys have seen, like, splashdowns a million times. So, either way, I come in. I'm like, all right, let's do that. Here we go. I, I do it again. Do the whole thing again. I'm like, ugh. So, then I come in. I land. And, and then I, I accidentally screw up my staging after I land. And then I blow up my thing. And that, that, that I'm like, okay. Now I'm going to have to redo it again. And then I read. And then I'm like, all right, well, I don't have any time left today. So, I'm going to have to do this tomorrow which is what happened so yeah that's why this video came out today that was it was such a meme recording this video but you know you gotta you gotta you gotta do it or not but you know we're here and that's gonna be the end of the video so i would like to thank you for watching we will see you next time please rate or comment to this video once again thank you for watching we will see you next time and bye